All right, here are solutions for the first first perfect problem for Math 243. Um, so I gave you some data. It's whatever. It's pretending Kevin Durant scores this many points in 20 games next year, which is probably a little bit optimistic here. But whatever. You got some data points here, and you're asked to essentially summarize the data. Also do some Chapter 2 stuff. Do some descriptive statistics. So the first thing you're asked to do is to create a stem and leaf plot for the data. And the idea with the stem and leaf plot is you want to take the last digit in every data point that you have um, and then you use that as your leaf and then all other digits become your stem and sometimes you have to round to make that all appropriate but in this case I gave you these two digit numbers and had it all set up as easily as possible uh, so what you do is you look at this and you say all right it looks like his scoring went from 22 up to 60 so the smallest stem I have would be 2 it's perfectly fine if you want to put in a 0 and a 1 before that but you don't have to you can just start at a 2 and then I'll write all the numbers between this two and this six. So in this case, I have games where we scored in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. But even if there wasn't this 50-point game, I'd still want a five right here in order to make sure that my stem and leaf plot has the correct shape. And then what I do is I just go through my observations and I write the leaves of each data point um, horizontally next to that stem. So what I'm saying is this 22, I represent that by putting a two right here. Is 24, represent it with a 4 there. 25, I got two of those, so I'll throw down a couple 5s here. 26, just one. 3 27s, and a 29. And ideally, you space these out consistently. Um, again, that's to preserve the shape. Uh, now I'll look at my 30s. I got a 30 point game, a 31 point game, and I'm trying to line these up correctly. A 32 point game, 34. Uh, 135 and a 38 and a 39 and I believe I hit them all as I was going through there and then moving on to our 40s I got a 43 and a 49 50s I got a 51 and 60s I got a 60 so this right here is my stem and leaf plot generally it's a good idea to put a little legend on these things so to write like when I write 4 3 that means 43 points because otherwise the reader might interpret 4.3 to mean 4.3 points. And yeah, 4.3 wouldn't make any sense in the context of scoring in a basketball game. So in this specific instance, you could probably get away without this legend right here. But I think it's a good habit to throw it on there at the bottom of your stem and leaf plots just, be, just to give the reader a little bit of context. Um, so if you feel like it, you could write points scored by Kevin Durant in these 20, point, 20 games in this season up here if you feel like it. Um, but it's okay to not do that. So step A said create a stem and leaf plot and it would comment on the apparent shape of the data. So the nice thing about a stem and leaf plot is it's kind of a histogram if you turn your head 90 degrees to the right. If I could take this guy and sort of rotate it counterclockwise, I could view this as a histogram where like this was my x-axis. And then I got this bar here. Oof, very hard to draw on a computer. Let's try that again. I don't know if that's any better. And then I got this bar here. And then I got this bar here, and this one here, this one here. So it kind of looks like a histogram, right? Except instead of the bars going up, they're going off to the side here. So you rotate this thing, and it looks like a histogram. And if you had a histogram like this, maybe the shape that you would call that out of the options that I presented in class, in class would be right skewed because we kind of have this tail that would go off to the right if this thing were rotated. So I would say that this appears... to be right skewed. And now I think I'm done with part A. Part B says use your calculator to create a histogram, play with the min, max, and bin size until you get a histogram that appears very clearly, that appears very clearly be right skewed. That That's not English, huh? That appears to very clearly be right skewed? Sure, I guess that would work. Too bad I already passed these out to you guys. So now I look like someone who can't speak English, but such is life. Um, so anyways, put these in your calculator. So you may remember from class that the way you quit out of all this. Uh, there we go. Uh, so my calculator here it, uh, should emulate a TI-83+, plus, so it should look roughly like the one that you have. Uh, so what you can do with the calculator like this, if you hit your stat button, um, and then you go into the edit menu, uh, you can type in data points. And I already went and typed in all of our data here just because I didn't think you wanted to watch me in a video. Type in 22, 24, 25. But if you kind of scroll down, you can see all those here. 
and note that I put them all in there it is, list one. And I have 20 observations because it's asking me for my 21st and that row is blank. So it looks like I got everything in there. Uh, so now what I can do is create a histogram. And the way I create a histogram is under stat plot. So I'll hit second and then y equals to get into stat plot. And then note that right now all of my plots are off. But I want to turn the first one on. And then what type do I want? Well, I want the one that kind of looks like a histogram, this guy over here. So I'll highlight that. And then it'll ask me, what list is your data in? Well, my data is in L1, so I don't have to hit anything at all. It's in L1, and that's already what it's set up to be. But if I put it in a different list, like if I put my data in L2, I hit L2. But my data is not in L2, it's in L1. Uh, and frequency 1, I'll leave that as a default. Uh, and now what I want to do is play, I think it said that, play with the min, max, and bin size. You find all that under the window. So my x minimum, well, my data goes from 22 up to 60. So I could make my x minimum, I don't know, 20 maybe. I could make it 22. A lot of freedom in terms of what you do here. Um, let's see, my x maximum, well, let's try putting in 60 and see what ends up happening. What do I want my scale to be? Well, to make it look like this, it was 10. What if I do something smaller? What if I try a 5? So let's see, if I make it 5, that'll put 20 to 25 in one bin, and then 25 up to 30 in the next bin. So a 25 would go in that next higher bin. So there'd be a problem here, because my last bin would go from 55 to 60 because my max is 60, but this observation 60 would be in the next bin. It would go from 60 to 65. So if I'm going to make these choices, what I should do is make this maximum, instead of being 60, make it 65. What about my Y mins and maxes? Those aren't as important. You can always make your Y min zero. Your Y max, you want that to be large enough so that it shows the number of observations in your most fill, full bucket, I guess. So I have, I don't know, roughly five or six, I bet would be the max that falls in any of these buckets if I make them five. So let's make it seven just to be safe. Uh, now I think I have a window that should give me a pretty good graph, so if I want to take a look at it, I just hit this graph button, and there's my histogram. And that looks pretty right skewed to me, that's not bad. Um, but suppose that you didn't like that one. Well, then you can go and play with these a little bit. Maybe you make this, I don't know, 8, sure. Um, and we'll go from 22 up to, uh, let's see, 8 times 5 is 40, so I'd want to go up to 68 in this case. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's okay. Can't see the top of this one. I don't like that one quite as much. Uh, maybe I'll do six. And this is all very subjective. You can kind of do whatever you want here. Um, sure. I like that one. That one looks pretty good. Um, so your answer, so I'm going to write B. Your answers will vary. I used, uh, let's see, my min I think was 20, my max was what, 68, and really I could have made that 62, whatever. My max is 68, and my bin size was 6, because that what I ended up settling on here? Let's see, yeah, 20, 68, and 6. So that's what I ended up doing, just because I thought that looked very right skewed. Most of the data is over here and then we got this long tail out to the right. Um, that gave me this graph which I'll try my best to copy. It helps if you trace it a little bit. So from 20 to 26 I have four observations. From 26 to 32 I have seven and so on. So I can sketch this guy. Maybe I'll throw my 20 right here. Although I guess if I made my min 20 it would show up right here. So fine. 20 26, I'm going to count up by sixes, so I got a 32, 36, 42, 48, 54, wait, did I screw something up here? Oh, I think that's right, uh, 60, 66, um, and then I guess it went all the way to 68, so there's a little bit of extra room over here, which is totally fine. Uh, and then if I go to my trace, I can just kind of count the buckets. I had four, seven, three, three, one, 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 zero. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four in my first bin, seven in my second bin, three in my next two, I believe. Yep.
uh, one in my next three. And then zero in my last one. Uh, so for my histogram, I made it like this. I thought that looked pretty right skewed. I liked how it looked. So I'm gonna call that good, but again, yours might look different. Suppose that I consider anything less than 25 points as disappointing, anything over 35 as excellent, and anything else as normal. Create a frequency distribution and a relative frequency distribution. So part C is getting at everything we've done so far has been quantitative descriptive statistics, 2.2 out of our book. Uh, 2.1 in our book was qualitative descriptive statistics. So if you have data that's not numeric, but instead is categorical, um, there's other ways to summarize it. So what I'm doing is I'm forcing this data to be categorical, I'm saying anything less than 25 is disappointing. So that would be disappointing, that would be disappointing, that would be dis let's write it over the top, maybe that's easier to see. Disappointing, uh, and I said less than 25, right? So I guess this would not be disappointing. Um, and anything over 35 is excellent. So that's talking about these guys down here. And anything else is normal. So all of these guys are normal. Which I don't know if a 35 point night is normal in basketball, but whatever, for the sake of this example, I guess it is, if you're Kevin Durant. Uh, okay, so now I have this data. Instead of thinking about the numbers, pretend you just have the letters. So you have two Ds, you have one, two, three, four, five, six Es, and I think 12 of these Ns here. So then what I'll do is I'll say disappointing uh, is that what I called it? Yeah, disappointing, excellent, and normal. All right. And then maybe I'll put the count over here. And for disappointing, I think I said I had two. For excellent, I had six. And so the rest, the 12, were normal. Uh, this is what's called a frequency distribution. If you want it to be a relative frequency distribution, um, you can add the proportion, pro proportion over here. So I had 20 observations. Two out of 20 would be 10%. So you can write that as 0.1 or 10%. 12 out of 20 would be 60%. And 6 out of 20 would be 30%. So since I'm writing them as decimals, I'll write them like this. And this would be my frequency distribution. And this would be my relative frequency distribution. And you might want to make the, hopefully you'd make these a little neater. Maybe you'd put titles on these things. Maybe I'll even write this. May, probably. Want to add lots more to these. So for example, label the axes, add titles, etc. Um, but what I did is kind of the bare bones just to give you an idea of what the solution should absolutely entail and then anything else you can kind of add on optionally. Um, so I think I did bare minimum for this problem to show people what the solution should kind of look like. So I'm gonna call this video good here.